kind of cutie. Hi. Okay. All right, tweets. We got to do a video. So, this is Christian in Man Cave number one, and I'm going to show you some amps today. That's the topic. Haven't done a video in a while. Just got back from vacation. So, we're going to compare some basic amps, mostly monoblock amps. Um, and how they're different. And uh, some people, some young people, were asking me about the differences between tube amps and uh, transistor or integrated circuit amplifiers. Oops, I have a fight to break up. Stop that. Um, now, tube amps, they have advantages and disadvantages. And here's two of them that I've built. Uh, that one is actually missing the transformer. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. It should be more like that. All right, but anyway. Um, tube amps are, of course, nowadays, they are exotic. Uh, they used to be old-fashioned, but now enough time has passed where I guess they're exotic. And uh, let's just cut right to the chase. The advantages of a tube amp, uh, they have better sound. Now, that depends on who you ask, but most people will say that they have more tone and, uh, quote-unquote, they are warmer sounding. And my theory on that is because a transistor uh, usually has a very set range of frequency that it will put out, and then it just cuts. Whereas a tube, uh, it more or less tapers off whatever the frequency uh, limits are. Um, there's been several videos and tests on YouTube about this. But anyway, here you can see uh, one tube amp. It's got two very large tubes. These are both monoblock types. Um, this one here, that's the triode, which is a preamp, and then your pentode is over here. That gives it the real power. Very high voltage, and that's another disadvantage of a tube amp. Uh, they operate at very high voltages, and uh, that will tie into power supplies. We'll talk about that later. But that makes them dangerous to handle. Um, you really have to respect them because they can kill you if you're not careful. And if the situation's right or wrong, maybe I should say, uh, it could be lethal or seriously hurt you. So you have to respect that. And these transformers reduce that high voltage to a more reasonable, very low voltage that the speaker can handle. Low voltage, high current, and that makes for good sound. It's also a matter of changing the impedance, which is another thing uh, we'll talk about later. But usually you need a transformer to change the voltage and the impedance of the audio output. Another disadvantage with tubes, they consume a lot of energy. Um, these things, they glow, and a lot of people think, wow, that's cool, and it is. But it's also very, very costly in energy. They heat up, uh, many of them to the point where you can't touch them, like a light bulb. And lots of us have been burned, literally, by touching tubes before. Now, this one, you can see also uh, a disadvantage. And again, that depends on who you ask, compared to transistor amplifiers, which we'll look at later. These are, but they're big. Uh, they're big and bulky. And somebody is a little jealous that I'm talking to you. Okay. Uh, they're large. Now, again, some people think that's neat, some people don't. But you can see here, here's all the components underneath in this one that I put together. Uh, they are large, and they consume a lot of power. This one is actually, it looks bigger and more impressive than this one over here, maybe, but actually, it's weaker. The output is weaker than this one. Uh, I don't know exactly how many watts this is. I would guess somewhere between two and three watts. I honestly don't know for certain about this one. Um, the type of tubes, this is a 6C6 uh, pentode, and this one I believe is a uh, number 1626 uh, triode. And they're very nice looking, but again, um, they consume a lot of energy and heat, and, and for the, all the size and all the energy you're consuming here, not a great deal of output. Uh, now this one is a little better, oops, pushed a button accidentally there, let's see if I can get it back. Uh, this one on my left is a little bit better. It uses a, what's called a combination tube, it has the preamp or the triode tube and the power tube all in one. 
and I was really surprised. Uh, this one is actually a uh, a PCL86, and the 86 series is probably the best refined audio tube. There are 85s and other things, which are actually meant for different purposes. Um, but this one gives actually an amazing amount of sound. I know it's at least five watts, maybe up, maybe over ten. I haven't checked. But uh, this one puts out a lot more sound and power than uh, this one. There's a transformer in there doing the same as the other one. It has the high voltage going in on one end and the low voltage for the speaker coming out the other. You need those transformers uh, to reduce the voltage, change the impedance for the speaker. Uh, we've got the input here and the output over here coming off the transformer. There's a little cage around the transformer. You have to have some kind of cover or cage because, again, high voltage, really dangerous. You've got to be careful. And you can also see lots of components under here, right? And, and again, a lot of people like that. A lot of people, like myself, enjoy messing with these components, putting them together and hearing the sound quality change. Um, but again, lots of energy consumption, not just for the circuit, but for the heat. There's a big fat resistor in there, you can see. That also is, uh, that's to change the voltage of my power supply so that I can heat up the filament in that tube there. Um, so you can see that. I'll get you a closer look really quick here. Okay, so these, th that's advantages and disadvantages. Uh, disadvantages ex can be expensive. Uh, it depends, I guess. Um, high energy consumption, high voltage, um, bulky, and um, you have to be careful. You need transformers as well. Advantages are if you make them, they're, they, you can sell them for quite a bit of money. And uh, the sound is very rich and very nice. And there's some nostalgia involved with that. Now, this is what they had for decades and decades uh, uh, since electronics has been around. Vacuum tubes created modern electronics. But now, we don't need big vacuum tubes. Um, and we can use little things like this. Okay, this is, now I just mentioned this might, at the most, this might be 15 uh, watts. Here, and if I said amperes before, I meant to say watts. Now, here's something amazing. This is a really small unit. You can see how small it is. This is 15 watts per channel, and this is stereo. So there's actually two 15-watt channels, left coming out here, right coming out here, input going in here. So, uh, and this would make a great headphone amp or speaker. I mean, I've hooked this up. I've hooked both of these up to this big uh, Tesla speaker I've got up here. And, and I've also connected this thing. And this thing is, is just as loud as that. And it's tiny. You can see how small it is. And it only needs 12 volts or so to operate. Just as loud. Puts out some heat. That's why there's a big heat sink on the back of this thing here. Most of the electronics are in this integrated circuit back here. Right? But that's all you need. You know? So you can see the advantages. Advantages is this is cheap. I mean, I didn't even assemble this. I think I paid at the most five bucks for this and waited forever for it to come to chi from China. Um, but it has everything you need. Everything but a box. You can put that in a box somewhere, mount it up, and you've got a great uh, amplifier. You know, for two speakers, no less. That will really, really make a loud sound, and you would never guess that. Um, but you can even go smaller. I mean, look how small this thing is. That's hardly bigger than my finger. This is also two channels. You have all your connections up here for power and speaker output and input. And everything is pretty much in that integrated circuit there. There's a couple resistors out here, but most everything is right here. So you can't even see the components in that. I mean, and this is made to run off, I think, only 5 volts, which is basically USB power. So this could be integrated into a little USB headphone amp or something like that. And it was, again, very cheap. I don't even know if I paid a dollar or two for that. And guess what? We can go even smaller. Right now, here's something. I don't know how many watts this thing puts out, but you can see it's hardly bigger than my thumbnail. Right? I mean, I can put... I don't have one next to me. It might have been smart to have a quarter or a coin. No, I don't. But you can see it's quite small. Yeah. And uh, all the connections, you would have to solder those and make either a plug-in connection or something. But uh, you've got your voltage, 5 volts, right? 
and you've got your input left and right, and then you've got your output left and right up here. So you can integrate that anywhere. And that's not a preamp, that's an amplifier. That's a power amplifier. So you could use that to amplify just about anything, a microphone. You could give a microphone a nice boost with that. Um, and probably run it off of uh, a hidden power source as well. So, and that brings another thing. Now here we've got our amps one more time before we go. And that brings another advantage and disadvantage. And when we talk about high voltage versus low voltage, all right, these need high voltage DC, these need low voltage DC or AC, they can have built-in rectifiers. And, for example, here's what you need if you build it. Okay, you can just buy a power adapter somewhere, and a used one will be almost free if you go to the Deseret Industries or a thrift shop. You can just find an adapter and plug it in on one of these. And if you build it even, I mean it's small. This is a regulated 12-volt power supply. Okay, so that's really all you would need. And that's bulky. I mean, you could go smaller than that. Um, that's all you would need to power one of these things. Or a battery. A 9-volt battery would, would do just fine. You know, you could use a small battery pack like that. These things, however, you need complicated power supplies. They have to be big. They've got to have lots of transformers. And here, I'll show you the difference. Here's one power supply I built for my tubes. And, it, and if you have one setup amp, you have to build that in. This is separate. Okay, I use that separate so I don't have to build a new power supply every time I build a tube amp. I can power this one or that one with this. Okay, and this is making it small. This is using two transformers. I could have used one, but I used two transformers to get two power supplies, or two levels of power, and a rectifying and regulating circuit here. This puts out about between 250 and 300 volts DC. And then back here we've got about 20 volts or so AC, which I use to power filaments. Um, not everybody does it like that. You could also have, now that's using solid state circuits and capacitors in here, if you can see those. All right, there's some coils and things in there. There's a, there's a resistor for safety that will drain those two big capacitors there, uh, which help level out the, uh, the wave for a good DC wave. And here is a big, heavy voltage rectifier. This puts out about 240 volts DC. And it uses a vacuum tube to do that, along with a big fat transformer in there that you can't see. But if you take a look at the size, okay, you can see that it's bulky and it's big and it's heavy and dangerous. You have to really respect that. Um, so, big bulky power supplies, big bulky tubes, but really nice warm sound and it's nostalgic. And that's really the only reason. I mean. You know, some people even say that these things sound exactly the same as this. You know, so it depends who you talk to. Some people could listen to this or this and say, oh, they both sound great. You know, and if that's true at the end of the day, this stuff is much more higher. It's consuming much more energy and it's dangerous. I mean, I can't stress that enough. If you get involved in tube amplifiers, you better be careful. Um, so, you know, it's up to you you got to decide. Uh, if you're just starting out in electronics, and especially if you're young, I would recommend starting out with these kind of things. Small projects, kits with transistors and integrated circuits. And, uh, and that's a lot of fun, and that will help teach you, you know, the basics of electronics. And it's safe, good, safe fun. You know, you can't hurt yourself with 12 volts, really, or less. Uh, I think only in, once you get above 30 volts, then maybe you can, you might be able to hurt yourself if you're really dumb. Um, but these kind of things, they're kind of complicated and they're dangerous, you know. Um, but it's fun. It's, it's lots of fun. So this is what I like to do. I like to build these things. Uh, but you can see I also have some of these around too. So anyway, that's a bit longer than I wanted to go. Just a little comparison today in the man cave with classic tube amps and modern, very modern and very powerful uh, integrated circuit amplifiers. Right, That's 15 watts of power right there. 30 watts if I make one channel out of it. So, Lots of power. This sucker will heat up like crazy, but uh, still, 
low energy consumption in comparison to these things. Okay, so that's it. Tube amplifiers versus uh, integrated circuit, or I should say solid state amplifiers. I hope you learned something. I hope you had fun. Enjoy. Bye. Say bye, tweets. She's got nothing to say. Bye, sweetie. Oh.